This is Elliot Hatzman. Welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about helping students write with voice, which can be one of the most difficult things for students to really understand how to do, especially young writers. This comes from an article on The Reading Teacher in which reading expert Timothy Rosinski and a classroom teacher discuss a strategy that utilizes reader's theater as an innovative way to help students understand voice. And the basic principle here is that you're turning text it's actually written, and then you're scripting a reader's theater play out of that. And so in a sense, essence, what you're doing is you're taking a story and you're having the students understand, okay, I'm going to turn this story into a play. And by doing that, very cleverly, you're forcing students to really think about what is this character going to be like in the play? Well, what would they say? How would they act? What would need to be narrated? What would the tone of the narration be? Which parts would they be? How would they interact? And you're really starting to get into this idea of character in a very deep way, because if you're going to write a character into a play, then you're forced to really reckon with what is that character like? How do they speak? How do they think? How do they react? And so there's sort of three steps to helping students do this. The first is modeling the strategy. This takes a lot of modeling, a lot of whole class upfront work to script texts together. You're going, one way that the, the authors suggest you might start this is students are actually understand that people talk and react differently because their peers do it. And so you can ask how would student A react if someone picked them last in a, uh, in, you know, for a game? Or how would student B react if they, you know, just got an extra milk carton at lunch? You can really have fun with it. And students will understand, oh, this person would be, you know, really excited about that. This person would probably make a joke about that. They start, start to understand that characters react differently. They talk differently. And after you're modeling a strategy that way, you then need to, as a class, start to actually develop the script. And so to do this, you start by doing a read aloud with students, uh, some student-friendly literature, children's literature, often one that has really good uh, voice in it. And then if it's a longer book, then you could only script a piece of it. If it's a shorter book, then you can script the whole thing. Um, and then if you have a larger class, once you get this going, you can have be scripting multiple books at a time to make sure that everyone has a part. And then work through with the students. What parts are you going to need? How are you going to deal with the narration pieces of it? And then the real meat of it is, what should the characters say? How do you know what they're going to say? What kind of a speech are they going to do? What kind of actions are they going to take? Um, and then you're thinking about also, are there additions or deletions or edits we want to make to the story as we turn it into a play? And then the next two steps are fairly self-explanatory. They're kind of the guided practice and independent practice piece of things. Um, potentially after you've got the whole class going, have students work in smaller groups in pairs, do some peer editing, some peer um, revision. And then ultimately you want them to independently be able to take a text and turn it into a reader's theater script. And again, the idea here is, is gain them a very deep understanding of what voice means, which they can then turn around and be prompted to transition into their own writing. Now, the authors also suggest many extensions once students are really comfortable with scripting these fiction texts. You could have them script expository text. It sounds a little bit strange, but if you think about it, there just be a lot more narration, some fewer characters, but especially with the social studies text involving a historical figure, there's a lot of rich opportunity, or a science um, book about scientists, lots of chances to really uh, get a sense of character and voice, even in the sense of expository voice. You can have students parody existing reader's theater scripts. So have them do a reader's theater script they've done earlier in the year, but create their own parody of it, their own sort of a bounce off story of that. And that could be another way to have them practice. Uh, scripting poetry. Poetry is often very evocative. It involves a lot of voice. And so have them script a Shel Silverstein poem into an actual reader's theater play. It'll be short, but it can be really rich. Um, script research reports. So after they finish researching uh, a state or an animal, turn that in port into a short play. Again, they're forced to think about how am I going to actually write this in a way that's my own, a way that actually uh, that, that involves my voice, involves voice of characters. And lastly, potentially consider having other students perform the students' scripts whether that's another grade level, whether that's another class in your grade level, and have your students really evaluate what was the voice like and that was that what I was going for? Did they capture the voice? Did they miss the voice? Was that the way I intended the character to be? Was that the way I intended the whole play to come across? 
Um, lots and lots of different options, but this is a really clever strategy of using the idea of scripting existing texts into readers' theaters plays that actually let students explore the ideas of voice both in the sense of characters specifically and also in overall writing. So, thanks for watching and happy teaching!